today I wanted to bring you along with me as I make my first ever gouache palette. I'll discuss why I chose the colours that I did. We'll do swatches when the paints are fresh and after they've dried down as well. And I'll touch base in about a week's time at the end of the video to see how they've dried down into the palette. This is just a plastic 28 well palette that I bought off eBay. It's pretty generic and you can get it on eBay and Amazon pretty easily. So the first step that I took when deciding what colours I wanted to use was to swatch out all the gouache that I have. And you can see that right here. I actually had a lot of duplicates of some colours. I then mocked up a little image of the palette and I wrote down the colours that I wanted and that allowed me to see where the gaps were and those are the ones that are highlighted. They're ones that I bought purposely to make this palette. I fully expected the gouache to crack as it dries so I mixed in some glycerin with almost every colour. The first colour that I put in here is Zinc White by Winsor & Newton. It's not my preferred white, I prefer the Art Spectrum one which I also add to the palette but the Art Spectrum one does crack a lot and I wanted to try and get a white in there that wouldn't crack as much. I just find this one isn't as opaque as others. Now when I did originally plan the colours I wanted I was going to get a grey and that would have just been a convenience colour and I ended up deciding to see how I go without it and just using black and white to mix that myself. So the next colour is a Burnt Umber and that is a Royal Talons gouache. I've never used that brand before uh, and I was planning on getting this colour in the Holbein gouache but it wasn't available at the time. This colour I just got so it would be a good base for darker skin tones. The next colour is Burnt Sienna and I love using this colour as a base for skin tones. Just mixing the tiniest bit of it with white gives a really nice tint. Then I like to add blue to neutralise it a bit. This whole side here is kind of a skin tone base side where their main colours, obviously I mix a lot of blues and reds in with my skin tones and yellows, but this is kind of like those base colours to create the skin tones. The next colour is Winsor & Newton's Flesh Tint. I don't care for the name, I think it's absolutely ridiculous to generalise what a flesh tint is. Uh, but I bought this one and I haven't tried it yet in painting. This was another colour that I bought to fill out the palette. So I'm excited to see how this one works for me. Moving on, we have Yellow Ochre. And this colour, I might have mentioned in previous videos, the binder in it has really separated. And for some reason, I decided that I should add more vegetable glycerin to this one, which was really the opposite. I don't think I should have added more. And I ended up going in and trying to add more paint because I feel like I had too much vegetable glycerin. And I chose to add this colour because firstly I think it's quite a nice earthy yellow colour but also it can be a good base for me personally to use with the more yellow skin tones. I generally just guessed how much glycerin to add to each paint but some of them I did have dried on a palette and that allowed me to see how dry they got and how much they cracked. Uh, and those ones that were really dry I added more glycerin to and those ones that seemed to dry actually pretty well and hold their shape I didn't add much to. Now here we have Ivory Black by Winsor & Newton. It's not a colour that I would buy myself, but it did come in the set that I got years ago. I wouldn't buy it purely because it's got animal ingredients in it, and a few of these colours do. And once they get used up, they will be replaced by colours that do not have animal ingredients uh, used in the making of them. Now we have Winsor & Newton's Primary Red. I just showed it there because you can see at the bottom of the tube, it's got um, like some binder coming out, and that's been happening for ages. I kind of knew I'd have an issue with this colour. It was really chunky. Uh, and it was the only one that didn't mix in smooth eventually with the glycerin or with the toothpick. I do think though that this is a really gorgeous cool toned red and I couldn't not include it in my palette. I do have another cool toned red coming up next. Uh, and I don't really think I needed both of them but I just couldn't decide so I decided to go with both. So one of my worries about adding glycerin in and having not done it before was that it would make the paints glossy when I swatched them. Generally that wasn't an issue that I found, uh, but we'll talk more about that when I do the swatches. In terms of how much vegetable glycerin I used, I probably used about between two and four drops per colour. And then I would just go in with a clean toothpick and mix it all together until it was smooth. It was easiest to see this with the brighter colours and the lighter colours. Uh, it was a bit hard to see how well mixed it was with the darker colours, so I just erred on the side of caution and mixed them for quite a while. Next up we have Holbein's Carmine. I believe this colour doesn't actually have Carmine in it, but I'd have to double check that. I know their watercolour doesn't. This colour is also a cool toned red, but it is a lot deeper and has much less of that pink tone to it. When I tried to pick between this and the Winsor & Newton Spectrum Red, I simply couldn't, so I rearranged my palette to ensure that I could fit the colours on in a nice, easy way. Next we have a warm red which is Holbein's Flame Red and this is a bright in your face red. I love this colour, it's got so much punch 
and I'm excited to actually incorporate this one into my painting because I haven't painted with this one yet. I knew I wanted a bright convenience orange in my palette and Holbein's Brilliant Orange is exactly what I was looking for. It is so bright. This colour is almost neon. I don't know how much I would go for this colour normally in my palette choices but as I said it's a convenience colour so I don't have to try and mix it myself and I'm really happy that I got this one. Next up we're moving into the yellows and for my warm yellow I chose the Windsor and Newton Permanent Yellow Deep. This yellow is a gorgeous warm sunset yellow and I've used it quite a bit as I've painted so I enjoy the opacity of it and I decided to put this one in my palette over the Holbein one that I had. I had three cool yellows to choose from, I didn't know that I had that many cool yellows uh, and I ended up going with the Windsor & Newton primary yellow over my two Holbein ones. Honestly there wasn't much to this decision, they all kind of looked the same, one might have been a bit of a lighter colour than the others but at the end it was almost just a blind choice of which one do I want to use and as I go through them I'll just top them up with any any of each one. Next we have greens and I could not limit myself to three greens. I really want to get into doing some landscapes and even though I haven't done them yet I just decided I needed them. So this is Holbein's Cadmium Green Pale and it is the most gorgeous bright leaf green. I could probably have mix it up a bit with the next green and some yellow but as I said it's a convenience colour and I just wanted it. Following on we have Holbein's Pale Green Light and this colour looks quite similar in the pan but they are quite different at the same time. The previous green is a lot more of a leafy yellow light green and this is just kind of I think up to personal opinion and debate I think this is just your typical green <laughs> uh, and again I really like this colour and I couldn't say no. Moving on we have Windsor and Newton's Permit Green Middle. This is another colour where the binder was really separated from the paint and I didn't actually add any glycerin to this one. This is just a beautiful middle green and I hope that I get good use out of it on my palette. And our final green is Holbein's Permanent Green Deep. This is a very blue toned green, it's quite different from the other three and as I said it was, it was just so different from the other three that I kind of felt like I should just include it. Moving on to our blues, I chose three blues for this palette and this one is Holbein's Cobalt Turquoise. This is the perfect bright sky blue, it makes me think of Studio Ghibli scenes, it just makes me want to paint with it. Now we have our cool blue which is Primary Cyan. This colour was a last minute change, I was originally going to go with a different one but I chose this one. I'm not really sure about the reason behind it but I can always add the other blue to it as the pan gets emptied. Our final blue is our warm blue and that is Windsor & Newton's Ultramarine. This is just a great warm blue and I use Ultramarine a lot in my watercolour palette so it's a colour that I'm pretty comfortable with and I thought I'd bring that over to my gouache palette. The next colour is our first purple and that is Iris by Holbein. I bought this paint specifically for this palette and that's because the other purple that I have was quite bright and I wanted something that was just a bit more muted and deeper even though it packs a lot of punch this colour. I just felt that there was a bit of a gap in the palette without it. This one is Holbein's Violet, another Holbein one. As I said this is a really bright in your face, almost neon purple. It's gorgeous but it didn't cover all the bases for me so I'm happy to have it in my palette but I did need to add some other colours. I could not resist Lilac by Holbein, it's such a beautiful pale purple. This is absolutely a convenience colour and it just makes me happy to look at this colour so I want it on my palette and the same goes for the next colour. Before we get to that though there is a bit of blue tack in the palette and that's just to keep a well empty because I do want to get pink by Holbein and it was sold out so I'm just saving a space for when I can get that one. Now we have Holbein's Brilliant Pink and as I said this is another convenience colour, it is just so beautiful. Seeing those two colours together just inspire me, they're so soft and gentle and I just want to paint with them. Our second last paint to put in the palette is Holbein's Rose Violet. This is just a deeper pink that I thought would work well in the palette and I was almost tempted not to add the primary red and just use this one but I decided to have them both because they are quite different. Lastly I have a full size watercolour pan which I put in my favourite white gouache which is Art Spectrum White. I want to see how this one would go in a pan and I also like the idea of being able to move it around the palette a bit. Uh, if this doesn't work out I might just drop white in some of the corners of those large mixing areas. 
this white had four drops of glycerin in it because it does crack a lot so I wanted to see how it would change if I added a bit more glycerin. Moving on to swatches, these are probably some of the ugliest swatches you will ever see so I apologise in advance for that. I can't say I was impressed by the Winsor & Newton Zinc White's opacity, it was just missing something for me but I think it would be fine to use as a mixing white. After swatching these I do wonder how necessary getting the flesh tint was because I find that mixing a tiny bit of burnt sienna with white gives me a really nice tint for a light Caucasian skin tone. So far I'm very happy with the colours that I chose besides that zinc white which as I've said it doesn't thrill me. And as I mentioned earlier something that I was concerned about with using the glycerin was whether colours would turn up shiny as gouache is supposed to be a matte medium. I did only notice that the Art Spectrum White did have some shine to it, as did the Lilac. Now I'm going to swatch those colours straight from the tube to see if that is a issue with the glycerin. Uh, and from the tube they're not shiny, or if the paints are just a little different in consistency compared to the others. I was worried when I swatched the Primary Cyan, and you probably saw me pull the swatch card away for a moment there, because it swatched so dark and looked really warm. I thought like I'd accidentally put in another warm blue but I found that as it dried, that one really did change in colour a lot. So that's why it's beneficial to have a swatch card to see what the colours will turn out to be as opposed to what they look like when you first lay them down, because gouache does change as it dries. I've inserted a little clip and a photo of the swatch card because I do find it really helpful to see paints swatched out that I want to buy, so I thought this might be able to help anyone who is looking at making their own gouache palette or building up their gouache set themselves. And I'd love to hear your opinions if there's any colours that you absolutely love and need in your palette or if there's any you'd leave out or if there's any that you'd change compared to what I've chosen. Alrighty, so it's now about 24 hours after I originally poured these into the pan. I'm sorry about the lighting, uh, it's night time but I'll try and insert the photo as well. I thought we'd just check in on how the drying is going so far. Most of them are still quite tacky but this one here is quite dry compared to the others. We've got some cracking with the lilac and quite a bit of cracking with the rose violet and that one did have glycerin in it. Most of them do except one. Uh, and then I thought I'll just turn this around so we can look at this side. And on this side here we've got a bit of cracking here on this one which is the Holbein Green Deep. This one's a Newton one here which doesn't have any glycerin in it at all, hasn't cracked yet but that's still very much in the drying phase, you can see it's quite wet. This green here has a little bit of cracking and all of the others are looking pretty good so far but as I said they're very much in the drying phase. I'm expecting it to take probably the better part of a week for them to mostly dry down. I'm not sure how this white here will go because it's quite full. This white here, that's quite full. Uh, and this one here I'm not sure that it will dry either. Um, We'll see how it goes and so far it's looking pretty good. All right so here we are one week later and I am just spraying the paints with a bit of water and I let it sit for a few minutes so that the paints can re-wet. I find that gouache takes a little bit more to re-wet than watercolour so if you let that water just sit there for a few minutes it reactivates a lot better. Originally I thought that I was being over generous with the water and I actually reabsorbed some with the tissue from some of the colours and Turns out I think I was under generous with the water and I should have put on a lot more. Overall I'm really happy with how the paints reactivated. There's a few of them that I think could have been a little bit better but then at the same time I also think some of them I just didn't add enough water to and if I'd let them sit with some water on them for a bit longer I would have had a better result. Some honourable mentions need to go to the Winsor & Newton Flesh Tint, the Winsor & Newton Ivory Black. Holbein's Flame, Holbein's Brilliant Orange, Winsor Newton's Yellow Deep, Winsor Newton's Primary Yellow, I think Holbein's Pale Green Light came out really well, as did Holbein's, I think it's Permanent Green Deep that I mentioned earlier, that's the, the more blue green. Um, and other than that, I found that the Holbein Lilac came out really well, as did the Holbein Brilliant Pink. The Winsor & Newton Primary Red and the Holbein Rose Violet both cracked a heap. These ones cracked up into tiny little pieces and I found that when trying to re-wet them and reactivate them it was a lot harder because I had these tiny little pieces of hard paint moving around the pan and it just made it a lot harder to reactivate whereas a lot of the others 
even though they did crack they kind of still held together and I was able to run the brush along them without it all moving about and pulling apart. I think for a lot of these colours if I really felt like I needed to get them at their most opaque uh, consistency that I could I would still probably pull them from the tube. I wouldn't be surprised if I find myself dropping some of the whites uh, in the palette as I use them just to get the really opaque white and I don't I don't have an issue with how either of these whites performed I just think that if I'm going for that really white highlight it's just easier to use it fresh at this stage I will not be closing this palette because a few colors could go flying everywhere there's that primary red you can see right there down at the bottom uh, it's just not ready to be closed but I do hope that with a few uses that the colors will kind of sit in a bit more and I've heard that that's kind of the case that after you use it a few times it just it seems to the colors seem to kind of accept that they have to stay where they are and you can close the palette now I just thought I'd do a little quick mix of kind of some skin bases uh, I found using this palette I was a lot more precious about not contaminating the colors but I think that might be something that fades with time so I was washing my brush off every single time I was dipping into any other color and something I have mentioned in previous videos is that as you can see here the paint beads when you mix it on a plastic palette and it's very frustrating I've seen and heard of some people using a bit of sandpaper to try and rough up the surface of the palette but what I'm thinking of doing to counter this is buying some watercolour ground and that's kind of like a surface primer for using watercolours uh, and you can kind of use it on anything minus sand, like you can use it on glass so my plan is to get some watercolour ground still use some sandpaper to create a bit more texture um, for the ground to adhere to and then I'm going to try painting in some watercolour ground onto each uh, mixing well and seeing how that goes if that gives me a more um, held together kind of consistency when I mix my paints. Anyway I'd like to thank you guys so much for sticking with me while I've gone through the process of creating my first ever gouache palette. If you have your own gouache palette or if you're thinking of making your own I'd love to hear your thoughts on mine and your thoughts on your own and maybe what we've done different or what you do similar. If you like this video please do give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below it's super helpful and I really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe. I'm trying to get videos out weekly, but I'm a bit of a busy bee at the moment, so it might be fortnightly just for a little bit, but I do plan on getting back to that weekly schedule. I have lots of different videos in some sort of works at the moment that I'm really excited to share with you guys, but for now it's time to go and I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you all very soon.